Hello, my name is Robert Linneman, and I'm an engineering manager. I'm also a mobile engineer. Go on to the first slide here. So one of the things are um, that everyone needs to deal with is matching designs. Um, and what I'd like to get to is, is inclusive design. So that's not only matching your mocks, but that's designing for all of the features of accessibility that mobile apps and that mobile OSs have. It's incredibly uh, advanced, the different um, options that are available. Next slide. On both iOS and Android, um, you can easily turn on a voiceover or talk back and be able to use your device completely without a screen. There's also um, options to do um, visual overlays where it changes color options or other things with zooming. And something that we're going to be focusing on is uh, display and text sizes. So one of the things that you want to focus on is 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 flow. You know, letting your data flow. Um, one of the things that are it's very idiomatic on Android is that everything's in a scroll view. Um, on iOS, it's becoming more common, and it's very important to, um, in a lot of cases, have views in the scrolling view so that you would never see the scroll view um, if you were on you know, a normal size device, but you might on a small device or you might if uh, font changes are enabled. Another thing that we um, don't often think about as mobile developers is the orientation changes. Um, not everyone can use their phone um, in portrait. Um, so it's kind of important to have that. Um, and then there's other great features like iOS rotors that kind of go at your content structure. So um, making certain text views be Headers can allow someone to just read through the headers to get to various sections. Um, other things that we need to design for are contrast. Um, sometimes it's obvious to see contrast for text, but there are sometimes text in images and where sometimes that would obscure the actual um, comprehension of words. Um, and when you have good contrast, it's, it's easy for everyone to read. Another thing is to avoid columns and to um, structure information so that when it reads out, it it makes as much sense as when you view it. Next slide. So iOS has the idea of a preferred font. Um, if we look at the little guide on the right, um, there are various things that you can set um, a font to, whether it's body or subhead or um, you know different title sizes. And if you use this feature and and set your fonts to preferred font and then also set adjust font for content size category to true, um, then your fonts will scale up and down. And so if you have a font that's a title and one that's a body, if the user changes the font size, it will actually you know, increase all of the fonts um, in relative. Um, and so one of the other ideas of flow is not you know, using the scroll view, um, and then um, some of the idiomatic things to iOS would be, you know, allow uh, labels to go multi-line, which is setting lines to zero, um, and allow text to define its own height to not cut off any um, extensors or, or parts of the font. Um, and then also uh, to set bounds of the screen, not only for uh, leading and trailing, but also to account for um, the notch and the bottom of the device. Next slide. Um, now I'm going to do a little demo. So what I have here is uh, Xcode setup. Um, this is a, a view controller that um, just basically describes the data that's um, inside of our simulator here on the right. This is Star Trek themed, so um, it will be uh, uh, you know um, targeted towards all types of people, uh, people that like Voyager or uh, the original series or um, Enterprise. Um, uh, there, there are some built-in tools that we can see right away, but we can think for all purposes that this design that, I, that I'm showing where there's a header and there's some fonts, this matches a mock exactly. So in, in the normal regards of, hey, I'm getting a mock, it's for this size, this is what it should look like. This will we'll say that this matches this perfectly. So I'm going to the... Uh, Xcode menu and opening developer tool and going to the accessibility inspector. This is a, it's, it's a tool that you can set to a simulator or to a device that's connected to your computer. 
Um, there's various modes, um, but one of the modes will let you go through each of the um, various items and you can see that this title has a trait that's header and um, this is static text and of course with UI labels, um, it imports all of uh, the labels content as an accessibility label. Um, a cool thing here is the audit. Um, it checks about a dozen things um, related to text and various things. It'll actually in introspect images as well. This one's showing dynamic text font sizes are unsupported. Well, we'll close this tool and uh, we'll try and see for ourselves what's going on with that. I'm going into the settings to accessibility and then I'm going to increase the text size. Uh, we're gonna just go large sizes and we're gonna go all the way up here. Um, let's go the penultimate one here. And we'll go back to the app. And we can see that, you know, now it doesn't look so great, but this one bit of text never changed. Um, so that's the first thing we're gonna change. We'll look in the code. Um, I've set this up so that it uses uh, um, code based constraints. Um, this is my preferred style is to have the constraint and then to have the is active is true. Um, when you're doing with orientations, it's very useful to save the constraints and then activate the constraints with uh, various orientations or with various size classes. Um, but this first one, um, we actually weren't using preferred font for this. Um, and it's as easy as just, you know, grabbing what text style you want, um, like we saw in that previous table, preferred font, and then also changing this adjust font for size, content size category to true. This feature came in in iOS 7 and one of the, was one of the big, um, there's a big design change where things went from skeuomorphic to um, kind of a more uh, modern flat design. And uh, we go back in here and you can see I'm breaking constraints, but that's fine. Um, that this text does change now. Um, we'll look at some of these other um, various aspects that we should change. Um, one of them is that this, this title, we're, we're just not respecting the sides. And this looked really fantastic at a certain moment. Um, but we want to fix that. Um, one of the ways to do that is to add constraints to the leading and trailing. Um, this, this will allow you know, the text to know which sides it is. But if you set the number of lines to um, a certain thing, it, it may not actually flow with it. So we're, we're going to set the number of lines to zero to allow it to take up any number of lines. Um, a thing I mentioned earlier is to not set the, the size of something. If you set like the height of a bit of font, it might cut off or clip um, various bits of font, which is definitely not what you want to do. And this one, this uh, thing from the original series, um, we see we see an ellipsis. Um, thankfully, ellipsis, ellipses are um, read out with voiceover in their entirety but visually it doesn't look the greatest. Um, so we actually set this to be four because that is what it was, but we're gonna set that to zero to allow it to flow. And then the last, uh, the last fix we're gonna apply here is uh, a little Voyager joke where we actually are jamming Neelix and Tuvok together. Tuvok, if you all know Voyager is the stodgy Vulcan and Neelix is the flamboyant buoyant cook. And in an episode of Voyager, there was a, transporter accident and they got mashed together into a character named Tuvix. Um, and there's a you know, number of memes about uh, Captain Janeway killing Tuvix, but really what, what they did is they separated them. It's, it's, it's a very emotional, funny episode. But the reason why this is happening is because we fixed the size of this box. And that's concerning um, because we actually, the top bit of text um, was aligned just to the, to the top, uh, it, its top aligns to um, the top of its container and the other bit of text aligns to the bottom of its container. So we're gonna have to do a couple things to make that flow. First of all, um, we're going to add um, a constraint between them. Uh, and so this will give us um, a top anchor of one will then uh, let us have five points and then it'll have the hit the bottom anchor uh, of the other. So the other thing we need to do is we need to get rid of our fixed size, which this is, uh, this set this to 50 points. Um, and so in the original design, um, uh, the, that initial design, you can set up the padding so that, so that it works for you perfectly. Um, but we're gonna run this again. And uh, we're gonna see that this, is uh, very big and we can see all of the text, all of it's clear. We can see that it, it um, 
it's scaled along with it. And we can see all of the text. We can see this whole thing. Oh, and, and oh, we wrapped it in a scroll view, which we hadn't seen until now. And we've separated Tuvok and, ne Tuvok and Neelix. So um, I would say Janeway did not kill Tuvix and she just returned things to their original state. Um, talking about returning to their original state, what we will do is um, we're gonna pop this text back down um, and then we're gonna go back to our app and see that this is our design as it was uh, matching the mocks. And so now all the font flows and we're able to uh, have our design be accessible for all with just a few changes. Uh, thankfully on, on, on both iOS and Android, there's a lot of uh, free tools. Um, if we get the slides back up here, there are a lot of free tools that we can use. Um, we saw the um, accessibility inspector um, on iOS. And like I said, it, it covers at least a dozen items, uh, which is quite good. Um, okay, so we're gonna look at the mobile test plan. I think this is what everybody needs. You know, they wanna just say, hey, what, what do I need to test for? What are, what's like the basic one thing or two things that they need? And I would say there's, there's four things that you can focus on. Um, one is the smallest device or the most limited device. You want to um, actually have you know, you want to test for the most limitations and the things to look for are overlapping elements or ellipses, um, as well as elements that got with the constraints got pushed away or, or are now missing. Um, an important thing here that we've tested is larger text. Um, and you can look for text that doesn't change or text that's clipping, uh, meaning part of the text is cut off. Um, and, uh, you know, elements that were pushed off screen or ellipses, other things are, are you know, things that are actually overlapping or, um, you know, text that, that has incorrectly, incorrect kerning or chemming as you jam kerning together. Uh, and then another thing is portrait and landscape. Um, there's various ways to do the constraints so that it looks great on portrait and landscape. Um, and things that you really want to look for is missing elements. Um, sometimes you have a constraint that works in one or not. Um, there's also ways to debug the constraints on both uh, Xcode and Android Studio. And the last thing is I implore everyone to learn how to use VoiceOver and TalkBack um, for mobile devices. It's incredibly important and the, it's, the devices have such advanced um, functionality and things that you really want to listen for are incorrect order. Um, Android has this fantastic thing called traversal order, and you can say traverse before or traverse after, and iOS has uh, accessibility containers so that you could actually take a couple different elements and then you could have it read out something. So let's say you have a form and, and you have you know, a title and then you have um, another element and you can actually have it just read out one thing instead of you know, being redundant, which is another thing being redundant. Um, if you have a button in the accessibility hint on a button is, uh, you know, um, tap button, you know, uh, voiceover will actually read tap button button, which is definitely something that you may not see um, directly, but uh, is really important. Um, another thing that you'll, you'll notice is it, it may skip over images that are important and that there might be text on there. Um, and there also might be extra hidden elements that are read out and that ends up making no sense, but you would never know. Um, some other things as you're using your app, I would say, that the things you wanna do are the things you'd write UI tests for. So it's like, could you use the audio features to go through your product to buy whatever you want or to go through all of the actions um, that you know you would normally do in the app. And just like a UI test, you'd be able to go through your app and it, it you'll find that once you make changes, it'll actually read out quite well. Next slide. Okay, the free iOS tool, we saw this already. Um, uh, and you can set it to, you know, the simulator, you can set it to your own device. This actually works with other apps as well. Um, and it actually will um, suggest fixes. So this fix suggestion on this one is using UI font preferred font and setting adjust font for content size category uh, to yes. So I would implore you to use the tools that we have. You can also set in the first thing, you can set it to play and it'll just play through everything um, to see the, the order as well as important things like if there's modals to not have it where you actually trap the user where they can't get out of it. Um, and you can also use uh, the keyboard as well for some of these features. Next slide. Oops, uh, the other way, here we go. 
And on Android, there's a number of uh, free tools. Um, Android has its own accessibility scanner, which is a, an adjacent app that will go through various items. Um, Microsoft uh, open sourced a accessibility insights tool, which is a desktop tool that um, can uh, kind of introspect into your app. And then there's actually pre-launch support uh, built into the Play Store. And it does some kind of features of monkey tapping, and then you can um, give it a robo file, which is kind of like a UI test file so that it could actually go through your app, but it'll suggest um, various fixes um, that are, you know, very worthwhile. Um, but, you know, things like, you know, labeling or touch target size, which I hope all of your touch targets are 44 point by 44 point or larger. Um, so um, that's pretty much all I have. I hope you make your, all of your apps fully accessible and you nail your designs and uh, everyone is able to uh, buy your products or, or enjoy your